We now take a moment to interrupt your regular programming with this public service announcement from the Stand Farm Fitness Guru. Aloha, Doug Jones here, coming to you from the end of the Alakai Swamp Trail, or the Alaki Swamp Trail, depending on how you want to pronounce it, overlooking the beautiful Hanalei Bay on the north shore of Kauai. Now this is the land of Hanalei. This is Puff the Magic Dragon. Now during that song, I don't think they were singing about puffing cigarettes, but it's a great place for me to teach you about cigarette puffing. I've had hundreds of clients over the years who want to start an exercise program who aren't ready to completely stop smoking, and that's okay. You can gradually reduce your consumption of cigarette smoking. But there's two important principles you want to remember when you begin an exercise program if you do smoke. One, don't smoke before you exercise, and two, don't smoke after you exercise. And it has to do with the affinity of carbon monoxide in the cigarettes with the hemoglobin in your blood. Getting right to the point, the hemoglobin molecule in red blood cells is designed to bind to oxygen and transport it from your lungs to your muscles, especially during exercise. However, carbon monoxide, which is found in cigarette smoke, has an affinity to this hemoglobin which is 240 times stronger than that of oxygen. In other words, a few puffs of smoke can quickly conquer a body full of fresh air, so to speak. And before, during, and after exercise, your body needs all of the oxygen it can get. So, if you haven't quite quit smoking yet, please do yourself and your body a big favor and don't smoke for at least an hour before and an hour after your exercise session, and hopefully gradually build up from there. And then, when you just can't stand it any longer, and you really, really get the urge... So that's it. That's a wrap. I'm heading four miles back out before the sun sets. I have to go twice as fast. We'll see you next time. Aloha!